guys, welcome back to Leo's and Leo's Planet. Today we are going to be looking at uh, bird migration for World Migratory Bird Day. Now the word migration comes from the Latin word migratus, which means movement. Also, when living creatures move across the world from one side of the world to the other and undertake a relocation. It could be seasonal, temporary or permanent. There are almost 10,000 species of birds and even half could be considered migrating. Now, not even two of those 5,000 birds migrate the same way. Their migrations are all different. Isn't that extraordinary? Now, animal migration is fascinating. And we have studied bird migration for over 3,000 years. It is mentioned in the Bible, it is mentioned in the Quran, it is mentioned in the Polynesian legends and even Greek mythology. Homer and Aristotle were fascinated about them. And you can even see girls on old Egyptian drawings. Now, we have tons and tons of technology and GPS signals to travel around the world. But these animals do not have it. Birds, they have it in their mind. And this is why bird migration is such a fascinating spectrum. Birds and animals have no notion of borders and frontiers. Now, when birds migrate to other countries, they should have animal rights. They should treat them in the same way as other countries do. And we will see in this video that sadly this is not the case. Why do birds migrate? They don't just leave their home because they want to or they feel like it. They just want to go somewhere else. Not for that reason. It's because of their natural instincts. Now migration is an extinct, instinctive adaptation to survival for birds. Now two factors drive the instinct, food and mating, but there may be other factors like climate or predators. Around 4,000 species worldwide are regular migratory birds. 50% of UK birds opting to spend their winter or summer somewhere else. There are tons of different flyways that birds take for migration. Every continent has their own routes and flyways. Birds, also sometimes birds take routes that have small islands and a place to stop so they can eat and rest. Now bird navigation is the most fascinating because they can use the magnetic fields. They can Birds can literally use the magnetic fields of Earth because of chemicals in their brain and in their eyes. Now, birds have this stuff in their eyes called cryptochromes, and these cryptochromes seem to increase during the migration season. Cryptochromes are proteins, and this protein helps them navigate. Now, which basically means they can see the magnetic field. Well, we can't, so it's so amazing. And yeah, they use it for navigation. Now they have these special minerals in their bills, which then get sent to the brain. And that basically gives them an internal map. Now birds also have great memory. They, on their first migration, they probably record, like, the, they draw lines from maps in their head and they record stars. Isn't that just amazing? Even mountains and even rivers, that putting and making the best routes and calculating the best possible routes that they can use for migration. Stars can help birds with navigational issues especially the shiny stars and even planetariums actually prove that tiny birds will line up with 
stars. Now, let's have a look at some amazing bird migrations. And the first one is the Arctic Tern. And this is the world champion, record holder, amazing Olympian of migration, the Arctic Tern. They definitely have the record for the longest and furthest migration on the planet. Arctic Terns can, uh, they do their migration from a pole to another pole. So for example, north to south or south to north. And that's about 72,000 kilometers. They are the record holders. This gives them two summers to enjoy, one in the Arctic and one in the Antarctic. And because of this, the Arctic terns are the creature that's even most in like each year. Now, Arctic terns can travel up to one million kilometers in their life. That is literally Earth to the moon, but three times in a row. And they live between 25 to 30 years. It's just insane. Let's talk about white storks. Each year, white storks nest on buildings, churches in Northern Europe and Germany. And each year their migration is from Northern Europe to Sub-Saharan Africa. They use the hot air to glide and fly across the sky. They can be found in Egypt, Kenya and other countries. They've crossed Africa meeting lions and elephants along the way. Now in the olden days there were stories where storks would carry human babies and drop them down the chimney. Despite the amazing stories about storks, they do suffer from plastic pollution and that is just so bad. And they even make their nests out of plastic. Now let's talk about swallows. Swallows are incredibly beautiful birds and they nest in northern parts of Europe before they migrate to the south in September. They must leave before the days become shorter and the nights become colder. They join tons of big groups going across Italy, France, Morocco and finally in the Sahara Desert. Now some go all the way to South Africa. Now let's chat about Swifts. Now guess what? Swifts has one of the longest migrations in the world. The Arctic Terns still top that bird record, but they still do have a pretty long one. They travel 22,000 kilometers. That's about 14,000 miles. Now, if you see in the summer swifts going south or north, then they're probably migrating. They stop in France, Spain, and Portugal before they reach their final migration point in Africa. They could travel up to 800 kilometers per day. Guess what? They eat and sleep while flying. They don't even stop flying, only to nest, but that's it. They'll just go like... And they spent 10 months in the air without landing anywhere. They only tend to land somewhere like just to nest. Now we need to create nesting projects for them. So, because they don't really have any nesting spots to like to, to have chicks. They just they just and their population is just sadly going down and down. And soon, if this keeps on going on like this, they will become extinct. Now, every year I go to South of France to meet my grandparents. And their this town has started a nesting project for swifts because they normally migrate through south of France. So they're putting nests there and there 
and everywhere they settled, which is so amazing. It is the most southern place in France, so this is why where Swifts need help the most. Because they're likely to rest there. The cards, well, they're going to make a huge journey across the Mediterranean Sea to Africa. And the charity called the LPO has a project to build more and more nest boxes, and it's just amazing. Now, a lot of people are campaigning for this to happen in the UK, but the government doesn't care, they don't seem to listen. They don't think it's that important to put nests somewhere. Because they don't care about these animals, and this is why this is so bad. So you can write to your MP to ask for more swift nests to be added. Now let's not look at flying migrations, let's look at swimming migrations. <laughs> not all migrations are up there, but some could be down at sea level or below. This is the case in the emperor penguins. Now, emperor penguins swim about 3,000 miles across the ocean and they can go about below sea level, 600 feet below sea level. Now, they also walk on ice for about 100 miles to their nesting colony. But sadly, because of climate change, the ice is melting, so it's a bit more complicated for them to nest now. First one is natural, bad weather. Hurricanes, storms, tornadoes can be terrible for birds because they might go off their migration route. Light pollution is a big problem because they can confuse birds during the journey. Light from our cities uh, can stop birds from seeing the stars and they might crash into a building and go. And unfortunately climate change is a big problem too because it changes the temperature and this can affect their migration. Habitat loss is a very big problem. It can affect their breeding, their nesting, but also their migration needs. Pollution, pesticide, pesticides, oil spills can be a massive threat to birds as well. But plastic pollution is the worst by far because if they stop for a few days to take a rest, something could get attached to their talons, their, their feet, and just their body. And that could be a massive problem. Overfishing is a big problem because if they don't eat enough food, they won't be able to travel and migrate. Poaching, they trap the birds and then maybe sell them or eat them. Now, hunting is a massive problem. For example, thrushes and red wings. Um, they suffer from this problem. Now, in the UK, here, we love our thrushes. We listen to their songs, we feed them. But sadly, when they migrate, they, they just get shot and they get hunted. Now, about a million hunt people in France have a hunter's permit. So can you just imagine how many birds could die? because of the hunt. And it's not only France, it's also Spain, Cyprus and many other countries. Now, this is just not good. And it's not even thrushes, just thrushes or red wings. It is tons of birds, like geese and much, much more, and some woodcocks. Red-breasted geese and a lot more birds are getting hundreds of down. Now, if you want to help these incredible, spectacular birds, there are a few things you can do. 
you can provide fresh water for your garden, in your school, in your park. Clean feeders and baths when it's hot. We can change how our city works to provide nest boxes and places to nest in our school or on top of buildings. Since birds eat insects, pesticides is not good for them. Just now, what we need to do is just reduce using pesticides. It's, uh, reduce the amount of light you use. It's good for your electricity bills, but also for the birds. Another good thing you could do is make windows visible. It's because sometimes birds could crash straight into a window. Now you could put like stickers on it, maybe a drawing, some some paper, and then they'll probably be able to see it and maybe not die from crashing into a window. And finally, go litter picking. Go pick some plastic off the road, um, maybe uh, on the beach. But yeah, all of those things, if you do them, they can help birds. And finally, tell everyone about these amazing journeys that birds take each year. Now, there are tons of books written by bird specialists. Now, I have two of these at my house. The first one is called Migration by Melissa Maines which has a bunch of amazing facts about migration. Another amazing thing is that we actually use this book to get some facts out on and onto this video. And the second one is called Flight by Mia Rose Craig. Now this book gives you tons and tons of information about birds. She is probably the most amazing bird specialist in the UK. She is even a doctor in science. Now, you guys know that all the money I make from my videos goes to animal charities. Well, today I've picked CABS, an uh, organisation called CABS, which stands for Committee Against Bird Slaughtering. Now, it's a charity that protects migratory birds from hunters and poachers in Europe. Now, another thing is you should definitely, definitely do a bird survey because it's just so fun to do. The video about bird migration has now come to an end. And guess what? I want you to like and subscribe if you like birds. I'll see you all next time. Bye!